Xavier is a business and management consultant firm with over 128 businesses restructured, 200 and more businesses started, two MBAs, a decade of experience. We can take your business to a whole new level. Hi, hi guys. Um, how are you doing today? It's a beautiful day, an amazing day to be alive. Um, it's such a great day to live fully. I stumbled upon a quote that I thought was really important. It says, um, there are basically two most important days in your life. Um, the first one is knowing that you have one life. And then the second one is um, starting to live that life the day you realize it. There are two days that are most important in a man's life. It's not the birthday or the death day. The first day is the day you were born. The second day is the day you realize the reason why you were born. So my prayer for you today is that you find purpose in today, that it draws you closer to what you have always aspired to be. Once again, my name is Easy, the MD of Hexavia. Hexavia is a business and management consulting firm with over 14 years of experience building startups and corporate restructuring firms. Um, three masters, a PMP and a PhD in view. I'm always excited to be here to share ideas and to think with you, right? So if you're listening right now, um, today's session will be quite unique and interesting, right? Um, uh, first thing first, we want to turn into to a proper financial clinic um, and business clinic. So if you're listening right now and have any business problems, right you can always call in and share your business problems and be willing to share them um to solve them the core ideology for me is none of us is as smart as all of us so we're ready to share your ideas and share your problems and challenges as well and like we're always doing on this show uh in between we're going to do giveaways right um shout out to everyone who's been back to back in attendance for the breakfast with izu that i've been doing at the co hotel and suite and based on popular demand i have good news for you guys we're about to start something called the brunch um, Stra- Xavier Strategy Brunch. Every Thursday after this show, we meet up physically in um, VI and then we have three hours of brunch strategy sessions on different concepts. So um, if you call in today and you follow the show, you'll probably win a free slot to the breakfast session in um, in VI, right? It's called Strategy Brunch with Xavier. If you also just want to attend, even though you didn't win, you can send interest and my colleagues will reach you, of course, at a subsidized fee, right? Um, so what are we talking about today? We're talking about finance for non-finance executives finance for non-finance executive anyone who's followed the show knows that um every week we have a theme for the show a key concept we talked about literally almost every part of management and structure right from branding to goal setting for 2023 to blue ocean strategy to understand your next five moves and today we're about to talk about something most people fear right almost people just don't understand in the words of nas people fear what they don't understand you know hate what they can't conquer right um so one of the key things is you can't go really far as a tech bro as a founder as an executive a c-suite if you don't understand basic accounting and finance principle so in like 30 45 minutes i'm going to break down everything you need to know about accounting and finance uh first of all i'm so much like a lot of you who who just started a career without knowing a lot about accounting finance before my three masters before a page interview for a pmp I read mathematics and it's a bit close to account, but it's not accounting. So I see a lot of people hustle so hard to build great business and their lack of understanding of accounts and finance ruins it. Is it that you're being scammed by maybe someone you hired as accountant because you know you don't understand basic bookkeeping or even your financial statement? How many Nigerians can read a balance sheet or can use a trial balance or even understand how to do the double entry principle or even an income statement or profit, what you call profit and loss? So today I'm going to break down all of the things you need to know about finance and account and i'll be slow and steady because i assume that you are not an accountant so this topic is called finance for non-finance executive right so the first question i usually get all the time for a lot of people is um what is different between finance and accounting right they look very alike but if you've ever gone to a natural university you know that there are two totally different courses right uh, they merge finance with banking so they say banking and finance and then accounting sometimes it's even in two different faculties so they totally do different things if you climb up a career ladder you also see that there's a difference so a company can have a chief accountant and still have a cfo right cfo is like the chief finance officer and then accounting um would be like a, basically so they're basically two different things basically and one of the most fundamental thing you've got to understand in business is that you can't go really far right without understanding finance and accounting right um accounting in its most in its most um fundamental concept is really about the process of recording bookkeeping and reporting of account statements right um 
or even transactions, right? Um, in your business, most businesses have what you call transactions as a unit. So, for example, I run a smoothie bar, right? Um, my product lines would be things like juices, smoothies, parfaits, salads, right? Now, the most important thing for me would be for people to come in and buy. So, every time someone comes in and buy, that, uh, that thing is called a transaction. And transactions are recorded as revenue. So, what's a revenue? Revenue is quantity bought over price per unit. So, if I come in and I buy, say, a smoothie is 2,000 naira and I buy three, right? My revenue from that transaction will be three times 2,000, which is 6,000. That's the first unit you need to understand. How to even, first of all, understand the difference between revenue and profit. It's extremely important as you start up a business. Daisy, how you doing? You finally made it here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Mm. I don't want to sound like every other person that says Lagos <laughs> traffic and all of that. But then I didn't expect the one I saw this morning and I didn't buy gain for it. I didn't put it in that, you know, that lag time. And here I am 10 minutes late. I'm so sorry, guys. But then we're here. So let's go on. I mean, we're talking about money and I like money. <laughs> and I'm so glad that we are treating financials for non-executives. Yeah. You know, um, when we talk about finance, everyone thinks of people that deal with money. You think of banks, you think of institutions, you think of um, the accountant in your office, uh, the auditor, all of that, you know. Uh, we then forget that we are, we, we are non-executives and we yeah. are the financial people. We need to have this knowledge Absolutely. it's really really important so i'm so glad that we're bringing it up in january so that some people wouldn't say i don't know these things i i never knew i was not thought i didn't do a course i need to go and do an mba no that's why we're here and that's how we are treating this topic so far so far you have done justice to explaining <laughs> what that is and what that means for all of us so we don't need to do an introduction anymore right but then <sighs> so far how like uh how do we how do we i'm saying we now not you you're an ex you're an expert people like us right non-executives how do we put in finance in everything that we do in our official lives in our daily lives how important is finance really the knowledge of finance if you ask me i think it's the unit of business uh, transactions um your prayer today is that you have more transactions you get more alerts okay. you get more sales all of that are financial terms something i bumped into a, a um, just my colleagues doing strategy sessions for someone this guy is a medical doctor runs five hospitals so five branches so that's a successful doctor mm. and he hit me how much he doesn't know anything about finance wow. right and of course What's the side effect of that? He's trying to get bank loans. Meanwhile, his books show that he's actually supposed to be healthy. Right? But he has no idea. And every time you see this happen all the time, the best doctors don't run the best hospitals. The best teachers don't run the best schools. The people that run the best schools and the best hospitals are just people who know average of that technical thing, like a teacher, like a doctor. But they know a lot more about business, which is finance. So finance is so important. A lot of people, first of all, don't know the difference between gross profits and net profit mm. or revenue. There's an argument I, I was having with someone. I said, when you're paying your tight and they say 10%, what 10% are you paying? Is it of your revenue or if, of your profits? Mm. A lot of people don't know the difference between revenue and, and profits, profit. right? So um, at this particular session is not to turn you all of a sudden into a super accountant, but just enough to get by, to understand regulation, right? Um, every single time I see this all the time, right? At the end of the year, and then LRS or FRS is coming to knock at your office. A lot of people don't even know how to defend themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, one thing about ignorance is you always pay double for your ignorance, mm -hmm. right? So um, practically speaking, it's something that everybody, I know people, for example, who cannot be promoted because there's a saying that promotion is a demonstration of your next position, mm -hmm. right? So let me give a good example. You're very good at what you do, but they need to promote you to be a senior manager. But the problem why they're not promoting you is that you're only good at what you do. So maybe you're a chef in a big restaurant, right? And the restaurant is about to expand. You need a manager. You work for five years in that place. You should have just been the next general manager. Yeah. But they get somebody outside. Mm. And you're upset because all you know is how to cook. You've never learned how to understand the management of running a, a, a restaurant. Nobody's going to put you as head of a restaurant mm. where you can't even record properly your accounting, right? Mm. So I, I would suggest that everybody should take a crash course on finance accounting or pay attention to the next 30 minutes. We're going to break down a lot of this so i basically i don't know if you have uh, direct questions you might want to ask me oh of course right. i have a lot of questions i'm so glad that you told everyone to 
pay attention for the next 30 minutes because we're going to be right back after the short break to give you all of those information. And of course, at some point, you get to chip in on the conversation. I think we have a prize we're going out, Absolutely. giving out this morning. Yeah, so you want to stay right here. It's Hot 93.3 FM is the business show. And yes, we are back right here on Hot 93.3 FM. And this is the business show. You're here with Daisy and Izu. And today we are discussing finance for non-executives. When we talk about exec- non-executives, we are talking about you, me, and those of us that did not go to school to go and study finance. You know, Actually, and- <laughs> finance for non-finance executives. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we are trying to do a very quick crash course right here for the next 30 minutes for you to know um, those things that you need to know in your business, those things that you need to impute in that little Akara business of yours or Moi Moi or whatever you're doing, you know, so that you can be um, a financial literate in whatever you do. Now, the mention of accounting and finance often sends uh, a cold shiver down the spine of many individuals. And this is quite understandable due to the technicality and that delicateness of financial records. Financial records is something that people struggle with. They don't know which one is in the expenditure part, which one is in the revenue part. They don't even know what your profit and revenue is. All of those things are really, really pertinent, especially if you are going to be um, pitching to investors. You know, you want to take loans. You want to further your business in one way or the other. It's really, really important that you get these things right. We all need intermediate knowledge of accounting and finance. And you might ask why we keep separating these two words, you know, accounting and finance. Well, it's pretty easy. I think Izu can help us break that down so that you wouldn't jumble it up. So, Izu, what's the difference really between accounting and finance? Okay, so accounting is really about recording and reporting of financial transactions, right? Um, mm-hmm. Business transactions. Or sometimes it could be non-financial. Um, so, it's really about recording and reporting. So, it looks like just keeping your books, yeah. right? Um, your accountant is very hands-on. It's very, it's very day-to-day. So, for example, if you went to the hospital to take medical attention and then in the end you they're giving a bill once you pay they're going to send that bill to the accountant the accountant is going to record it as a revenue mm. right at the same time maybe somebody came to supply that same hospital um drugs and um say injections going to record it under the expense so that's an accountant work basically recording, recording. and reporting it reporting it to the different stakeholders because mm. accounting has so many stakeholders but in this case the most important stakeholder will be the owners of the business mm. generally and all businesses don't have to see the journal or the cash book mm. right they just want to see high level how much did you make in a month or in a day there's the recording so really accounting is about recording and uh, reporting but finance is a bit broader and it's a bit more sophisticated and complex okay so um while accounting by recording and and, and um reporting right finance in the other hand is really about investing okay right advising directing hmm. right so um you can see that in a very big organization cfo would probably be sitting on top of the accountant mm. right um and i have mentees that always ask me oh i want to go further in my career i have one of my colleagues um intern who got a job in cbn and I'm like well, i want to take a professional course should i take icon should i take acc or should i take cf cf um what you call cfa I'm like we'll take a cfa is a higher level mm-hmm. because that's like very serious because you're dealing with the ceos at the time so why accounting is about reporting and recording finance is really about directing investing so for example when you finally make all that money mm-hmm. is a finance guy that will come and tell you that oh you know what you're operationally levered or you're financially levered you have too much liquidity because you have too much liquidity can you divest the business into mm. something else so i give a practical example um tesla made so much money right mm. elon musk and decided to diversify that money into twitter I, into spacex some people would say he went mad from there yes uh, absolutely <laughs> we are still trying to recover <laughs> i think tesla's challenge is probably has a good a financial person who he doesn't just listen to. It looks mm-hmm. like somebody, it looks like, it, I don't know why it reminds me, Tesla, uh, Elon Musk reminds me of Kanye West and Donald <laughs> Trump, right? People that don't just listen. You know, you have the right people, but you don't care because mm-hmm. here's the truth. But what he did was supposed to be brilliant because mm-hmm. when you have so much money, you diversify. So let me give an example. Extremely, you're number one in your industry or number two in your industry. Tesla was already number one in the um, electric car business. Mm-hmm. It's like what the Dangote did. He was already number one in sugar, in cement, mm-hmm. in flour. So what did he do? He diversified to refinery. Yeah. Right. So that's what a finance guy would tell you to do. So mm. you see why advice, top level, a finance guy would tell you, oh, you know what? You need to get a loan. Mm. 
mm. right? A lot of people think that getting a loan is bad. I, I was talking to someone said, as Christians, we don't take loan. I'm mm. like, really? Who said that wow. as Christians? We, we, are, we, we, are not, we are not to borrow. We, we are not to <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And, I, and, I, and I'm like, <laughs> if only you know that there's a level of business, of height you go to, where you are, it's actually dumb to use your money to do business. Mm. It's actually not a very smart move to do, mm. right? Because uh, sometimes it's better, right? So that's what a finance guy would do for you, right? So finance is about MPVs, IRL, payback period mm. and all this type of grammar now, right so what's today's <laughs> value of so your one thought for example your 20 million naira now mm. is not worth 20 million in 10 years time definitely right so in somebody Nigeria, can tell you anywhere in the world actually mm. anywhere in the world but i'm not talking about inflation i'm just talking about time value of money okay then there's not time value of money plus dollar and all that that's yeah. not the corruption but so there's a lot of complexity so let me give a practical example nigeria is in trouble right now i was telling someone that this is the very first time where you have a cbn governor right who is not a finance person okay. people don't actually know that right so he worked in the bank for years but his first degree is not finance right it's a very strange conversation right very yeah. strange conversation very... so we can i don't need to explain <laughs> okay. i don't need to explain what that means we all in the country we can see what's going on with our finance right so mm. sometimes we confuse those we can do you, you work in a bank does not exactly make you a finance person right i mean you work in a bank you probably read crop science you read your bad technology mm. and then you got into a bank right you've got to be able to first of all if you call it a banker right there has mm. to be banking and finance but of course what the years you say that the compensate has been in the bank for a very long time uh, but I'm, the affect i'm so glad that you brought that up because the next question i was going to ask is can anyone be, who who then can become an accountant and who then can become a finance i mean if i have worked in an industry for a very long time doesn't that qualify me to be seen as those that actually got a degree in that particular... For example, you mentioned the governor, right? The CBN governor. He has been in the bank in sector for a long time, mm. right? And it's natural that his experience should be able to... Um, he should be able to learn from experience, right? To do better in that field. So... Mm. Who then is a finance person? Who then is how? So, yeah. so, so that so that terms, right? So, look, it's like let me give an example. Working in a hospital for a very long time doesn't make you a doctor. It depends on what you're doing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You know, with medicine, you're not a doctor, okay. right? You, you can be a herbalist, right? But <laughs> not a doctor. So, let me give you a practical example. Okay. The finance of Nigeria, right? The best people to be in that position are people that read economics. Like, like Nigeria has a history. You read economics, you probably, especially macroeconomics, talks about the economics of things and then finance. But there are a lot of courses that can fit in, right? But that's not this conversation here. The main fundamental conversation here is that there's a difference between both. But beyond even that, it's important that. Whether you're a finance person or a finance person, take a crash course, right? Uh, that's really what the first thing is. And then understand the setting terminologies. I'm going to break down some of those terminologies you must first understand. It doesn't matter what you do in the business. As you grow higher in the business, you've got to learn, first of all, how to read basic statements. Basic statements will be P&L, what we, we call income statements, profit and loss statements. You must be able to understand what a revenue is and how you arrive at your gross um, gross profit. So revenue is cost times selling price. Uh, um, sorry, um, selling price times units, right? It gives you a revenue, right? So like I talked about the smoothie guy, right? He sells five smoothies at 2,000 naira each. His revenue is five times two, right? Then your cost of sale is the cost that you bought that smoothie that you're selling. So you sold a smoothie for 2,000, but all the fruit you used to do it, right? Is let me say 600 naira. And then the container that you put is 200 naira. Right, your cost of sales is 600 plus 200, that's 800. 800. So that means that your gross profit is the 2000 minus the 800. Mm. Right, gross profit. People confuse gross profit as actual profit. Like, so let me give you an example. I, I see this all the time. I sit in interview boards and someone says, and I ask how much would you pay for this job you want to be hired? And he says 800K. I'm like, okay, 800K, is that gross or net mm. salary? And you'd be shocked at how many people don't know whether 800K is net and gross. Mm. Right, so. Once again, the same smoothie guy thinks that his profit mm. is one two, one two, right? But what is profit is actually gross profit. So you need to understand these terminologies. Okay, matter so, of fact, lack of finance. Okay, you wanna? Uh, yeah, just for layman understanding. So if um, one two is the gross profit, then what is the profit? What is the net profit? So I'm going to get there. Just stay okay, with me, okay. easy. <laughs> matter of fact, a very lame, a layman than lame would think that he died that day. He made two hundred, two two thousand. Right, okay. because if he looks at his post, let me say he's a, he's a very sub subsistent 
guy on the street. If you look at his post, he's going to see 2,000 out there. Mm. So he, he's happy, mm. right? He can even take out that 10% for tights. Mm. But that's not the case. Mm. Because now you've made gross profit now but don't forget you have other expenses mm. apart from that for example that place you're staying even if it's on the streets alaye lagos alaye will come and collect their daily money where would you put that now if you're in a proper shop you paid for rent mm. right mm -hmm. that rent you remove it from the one two mm. right so that rent you're not going to remove it it's not part of your your cost of sales cost of sales your cost of production what we call direct cost so in in, in accounting right it's not the most um exciting concept but it's the most important concept mm -hmm. right um you know i've always said that um if you do what's hard your life becomes easy if you do what's easy your life becomes hard mm -hmm. right it's not the very easy thing to understand but you've got to understand it so first of all your gross profit is your sales minus your cost of sales then you have your 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 that's your gross profit then you now take away other expenses like rent like salaries right all these things you're taking out we call it indirect cost so cost generally is broken down into four categories right mm. direct versus indirect and fixed versus variable cost so your direct cost are all of your cost of production that is directly associated with that one cup you oh, sold yeah. but you see rent is not directly associated because no. in the next six months every time you sell rent is still part is indirect yeah. do, you, yeah. do you understand that concept yeah so when you take out your cost minus cost of sales right you have your gross profit when you take out your gross profit minus your indirect cost indirect costs are broken down into general expenses admin expenses or personal expenses there are a lot of expenses in that cup that you don't see mm. for example you did um let me say you did banner outside that banner is a cost mm. to attract people right you paid salaries that's a cost right you send somebody to market that's a cost mm. you paid rent that's a cox when you remove all of that together you have what you call a, a bit that that's any your real earning right mm. which almost sounds like net profit but still not because mm. it's called a, a bit that any before interest tax and education and then and deduction so and and depreciation sorry a bit that now pay attention you remember you already had one two as your gross profit but then take a salary blah 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 you can take out like almost 400 naira so 400 naira from one two what do you have left wow. from one two so you have 800, 800 naira left naira. right yeah. now before you get happy to say oh i finally made 800 naira as net profit no you have to remove tax because government is going to come for you mm. uh, especially lagos state governments mm. Their eye, they red, die, right? <laughs> so they're going to come for you, right? Yeah. Um, they're going to come for you for maybe premise tax. Mm. They're going to call you for private, um, what, you, what you call it now, um, your private income tax, right? Mm. Um, your personal income tax, sorry. So by the time they take all that one, your 800 now can now be like 600. Mm. Then did you borrow money to set up the business? If you borrowed money, you have to remove it. This conversation <laughs> is becoming more difficult just as you keep progressing. <laughs> So at the end of the day, we just have hundred naira. You probably have naira. like four hundred naira on your ah. two, on your two, two, two thousand. <laughs> All of us that are saying we want to flex, with, uh, so there's no <laughs> flex money inside this money now. But the good thing is we're using one unit. Okay. But by the time you have four hundred naira on hundred cups sold, mm. right? Mm. That's a lot of money. Well, right. Uh, well, in this generation and time where people are hyping money for goods and services. Um, we want to, we, most times people don't look at this volume. Normally a typical businessman can sell with 30, 30 naira and he's looking at the volume normally. Yeah. But in a time like this where we are selling one, one, we are doing online and all of that, where we don't really get so much from that. We don't really, um, sell so much, um, volume anymore. How then do we program, uh, thoughts? How do we, program our minds to make this because at the end of the day the profit is not so much mm, it depends on the business right so the reason why this looks very petty for you is because <laughs> it's b2c right business to customer yeah. what you call retail is retail mm -hmm. retail business is always small small money look let me give example after you go to the bank the bank makes 80 naira from you 90 naira from you 100 naira from you you don't think about it as 100 naira because think about it 100 times maybe 10,000 people in that branch that, mm. that, that comes, that came in. So when you run retail, understand that it's a business of numbers. Mm. But when you run B2B, mm. right? For example, um, me, I'm a consultant, mm. right? I don't do 80 naira, blah, blah, blah. Mm. I, in a month, I can get only three projects. Mm. But if you're a smoothie bar, you can't sell only three cups, mm. right? So for we that do B2B, we have an advantage to a large extent because we can have a higher net profit. Right, my cost of sale is quite low, 
but if you do so it's really for you to understand and this is where accountants start to move more to finance because that's why i said finance is about advising right directing so if you don't have the right advice you have to first ask yourself do you have the pay for example i don't have the patience to do with 200 people in a day mm. right i don't have the patience by personality there are people who enjoy to human interactions if, if I'm going to do a smoothie business, for example, I'm going to say, how am I going to do technology? I don't want to sit down and be able to buy. Every day I'm, I'm selling to different people. Yeah. I'm getting upset because people are t- talking to me how I want. Yeah. There are people who enjoy that interaction, right? Mm. So the commission here is really decide on your business model, but always keep your eyes on your, your cost of sales, right? On your sales. But here's the good news about all this conversation. It's always important to run a business that has steady and reoccurring, right? revenue so if you check the biggest companies in the world you find out a trick they are not selling to just one person once they have a model where they sell to you once then they find a way to be making real current money from you mm. i'll give a good example you buy an iphone mm. 14 pro max maybe 1.2 million mm. apple is not interested in just making 1.2 million from you mm. they give you the phone then they start making money every month from subscription mm. you know ios blah blah this itunes subscription this yeah. and that's why if you see big companies right now most all tech businesses mm. and the reason why is because the tech businesses understand real current so the rule of thumb is any business you're doing right now mm. think of not making money once from a customer yeah. think of how you can make money real current look at netflix why is Netflix one of the biggest company in the world subscription. right there's subscription yeah. so and so the Duty and the most disruptive and sophisticated strategy you can have, even as a retail brand, is even though I'm selling a retail store to you, I'm selling it as a retail store to you. Yeah. How can I have your current revenue? I'll give you an example. <laughs> I was telling somebody that was the, most, was the biggest retail s- s- brand you know in Nigeria, brand that has yeah. users. And somebody said the banks and the finish stations. I mean, what? What? I said Amazon. Amazon. No, I'm talking about Nigeria. Oh, okay. Right. So banks, for example, Zenith has over 500 branches. Okay. There's a lot of stores that have 500 branches. Philly Station also have 200, 200. I said, guess what? <laughs> I will tell you that the biggest brand, and I didn't say the biggest business. I said the biggest retail brand. But even though I subconsciously think that they should be seen as business, is the churches. I said, Redeem Christian Church has over 16,000 <laughs> branches. And this might be interesting to somebody to know that the biggest mm-hmm. and the most lucrative and the most fast rising business in Nigeria actually religious stations. The biggest company in Nigeria in retail does not have a hundred, a thousand stores. But you have churches that have 16,000 stores. But you know what the beauty of churches are? Is recurrent revenue. <laughs> you know, tight is every month. I don't know if you understand what I mean. So yes. learn from the churches that if they we can charge you every month, right? <laughs> I was still talking to someone that runs a smoothie bar. I said, you don't run a smoothie bar. When you sell one smoothie to these guys, is there a way you're getting them to come back over and over again? Right? So you can pay me for a year, a month. Instead of paying me every day, just pay me for a month and you can you can come and pick it up anytime you know you know as as you are as you are saying that i was thinking like apart from tech companies what other model what other business model what other have subscription models yes are you are you joking I, dstv uh, oh come on it's still, it's still, <laughs> it's still tech. tech it's still tech it's still a tech it's business still tech, huh? yeah still let's, tech let's business. talk about clothes let's talk about let's talk about food let's talk about other commodities aside from tech things mm. like really so at the end of the day it still ends with tech no, no, not exactly. We just need to think deeper, right? Because mm. here's the thing. That's why I said, first of all, I think by design, every business you're running in 2023 should start transitioning yeah. to being a tech business. Mm-hmm. Look, Definitely. it was called Transport Taxi. Mm. It transitioned by a brand called Uber, mm-hmm. right? So I think that, yeah, I agree with you that that's the problem Nigerian brick and mortar businesses are having. And I just told you that problem is not for you to solve it. Is that most of your challenge is that you're collecting money once and not a subscription model. Yeah. So if you think deeply about it, is how can you have a subscription model even though it's a physical brick and mortar? Izu, we are giving out, we are dishing out some very, very nice nuggets this morning. I am so excited about this. And I think we have charged someone today to start thinking the tech side. I mean, we need Absolutely. to start making real current um, profit, not just one time profit. It's not about, it's not just good enough to get people to come back and buy they need to you need to make them buy without really buying it's called sticky revenue actually you must have a sticky revenue that comes back Hmm, yes okay so yes it's um 35 minutes gone past the hour of nine we are still discussing um finance for non-financial executives oh yes and um we are still here having good conversations uh later on on the show we'll be giving out um a ticket to the brunch that we're organizing 
um, later later this week? Or Thursday, every Thursday, starting from next Thursday. Um, yeah. VI, uh, once we finish the session, we're going there for brunch. Anyone can join. We're actually genuinely trying to create the community of this radio show. Yeah. So if you're listening, you like the idea, you want to meet the person behind the scene and share strategies and ideas or challenges, bring it on and we'll be able to have that type of conversation exactly so you see we're giving out more on this show then <laughs> yeah so you want to key into that so just uh, pay attention listen in because we are going to be asking some questions that you are going to answer and get to be part of that branch but then before we go into that let's we, we talked about books and there are lots of them what are the most important ones that people have to keep what are those important books that we can't do away with because i know that there are lots of bookkeeping mm. in accounting mm. so let me start with first your source documents right uh receipt invoices i see a lot of nigerian businesses that do businesses and don't have receipt and invoices mm. right so you must always you pay somebody for something can you ask for a receipt can you ask an invoice because at some point when you need external let, let me tell you what's going to happen whoever wins the 2023 election mm. right would struggle in the first one year okay because nigeria has so much debt more debts than their revenue mm. The, the only way Nigeria can come out of that is by taxation, highly taxing people. So remove subsidy tax people. That means tax guys will be so in your face to collect money. Mm. And when they come in and they give you a bill that is ridiculous and you're asking how, the only way you can defend yourself to show them what you're making. But you can't show people what you're making if you don't show them invoice and receipts. Mm. Even your tax guys, because if you say, oh, you know what? Because that's the problem I see Nigerian businesses do. They use their corporate account mm. to do personal transactions. So if the bank, if the tax guy comes and wants to judge you by your bank statement, mm. you're going to pay so much money, mm. right? I don't know if you understand what I mean. Yeah, right? I so, so practically speaking, that's one of the first, keep your source documents in order. Then two, you must know how to read profit and loss statements. I'm not say books, we're talking about, no, we're not talking about textbooks. We're talking about accounting books, right? Mm. So um, your, your journals, your cash books and all that are, are important. But the three things you must learn how to do is income statement. And I just ran you through this income statement. Revenue, less cost of sales, less um, all of your expenses, right? Revenue, cost, less cost of sales gives you your gross profit. When you less all of your other expenses, it gives you your earning before interest tax and deductions and de um, depreciations. When you less all of that, you now have your net profit. Okay, uh, you, you said a lot of technical things. In here. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Swahili at some point. <laughs> so please, people, could, you, could people, you say that again? People can read up about it, right? People do spend, don't spend four years to read accounting for nothing. You're not going to learn everything in one year. Just learn in key concept and go back and understand it. Okay. First of all, cost is broken into direct and indirect costs. Direct costs are those costs that are directly associated. Indirect are your, your costs that are associated, but indirectly, like rent, mm. like um, salaries, mm. right? Um, to largest than marketing, right? And all that. Right, when you less that sales is same thing as revenue. Mm -hmm. Revenue is the money that you made when the customer gave you money, but that's not your money, right? Mm -hmm. That's just your preliminary um inflow, right? When you reduce everything, you have gross profit. When you reduce from the cost it takes, hope that is very easy to understand. Gross profit, net profit is when you take out all of that plus you've paid tax and everything. So at the end, that guy that made say eight hundred naira on 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 that business, if he sells maybe one thousand in a in a in a, in a month. That 1,000 times 8 is now his net profit. But here's the key thing about it, right? That whole thing I just explained is the income statement. Then you need to learn your balance sheets, right? Your balance sheet is basically about um, your equity, your assets, and your liability, right? So you need to know what asset is and what liability is. The biggest problem I see is people don't know what asset and liability is. So, for example, when you buy a car and the car collects more money from you, normally people buy a car as an asset. Mm -hmm. But if that asset takes more money than you than is making for you mm. it's a liability mm. so a lot of people are driving 50 million naira liability that they think is assets mm. because that is even depreciating but minus that it's taking it's, it's costing you too much money right yeah <laughs> you know as you're talking it, it, it's, of course it's applicable but yeah. <laughs> from what happened last year with cars and all of that people were saying well car is no more liability anymore it's now an investment you don't know what will happen tomorrow you know with the custom increase customs increase of cars and all of that mm. i just wanted to chip that in i mean in this <laughs> society we we have we have our laws right mm. we have the more financial laws but in nigeria it seems it like we have our own ecosystem but, but i agree <laughs> but with finance that if it took 20 million to buy a car that in six months because of dollar you sell it for 25 million that's what they're saying right mm -hmm. because it's 20 25 million yeah. think about if you use that 20 million to put in your business mm. Right. Even sometimes house, 
that you live in, mm. right, is a liability. Even though people think it's an asset from a non crime. Let me give a good example. Um, there's a celebrity in this country that in 1992, right, bought a house with the same amount of money, a house to live in, a mansion, a celebrity in 1992. If you know Nigeria, you know how many is a singer. Mm. I don't want to mention his name. The same amount of money he used to buy that house to live in was the same amount of money Jim Ovia mm. used to set up Zenith Bank around that period. Mm. Now, do you want to compare not, how much uh, Zenith Bank is worth are you, are you with that house? That house, by now, the maintenance cost of having a mansion. So, people need to understand this the kind of things we do without understanding finance and accounting, right? Basically. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's uh, pretty much so. You don't understand how you come statement work, a balance sheet and a cash flow. Please, don't be an executive without understanding the three. Mm. I think that's pretty much what the answer is. So, balance sheets, income statements, and, and um, cash flow. Okay. statements right okay. balashit now has a new name it's called statement of financial position okay all right and those are the most important documents that you need to understand yes the most important statement that you must know how to read there's one million of, of them course, but there are lots you of must them. know that as a non-executive you must yeah. know how to read it and of course how to plan budget and all that but budgeting that's another commission a lot of people don't have a budget they don't plan so when you don't plan you when you don't define where your money is going to you end up wondering where your money went right so people don't plan like a lot of people don't have a budget they just spend money impulsively mm. okay uh we're gonna be coming right back after this short break when we come back we'll be asking questions as to the discussions that we've had so far and like we said we are giving out a ticket to our branch that we're organizing where we're going to meet like minds and so much more but for now let's just go in and have the short break and we're right back xavier is a business and management consultant firm 